Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want us to do some praying before we do anything else. Is that okay? It's like there's quite a few of us that are under the weather. I feel like we can pray against the spirit of infirmity and lift something off. Hallelujah. Amen. Love and his regards. Um, somehow the Lord fell on me today to preach. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because he's not here. And I pray that I can fill those shoes as much as possible. So we want to lift up prayer for him. I spoke to Juma this morning. Juma is also not feeling well. Now, when Juma is not well, you know there's a problem. Hallelujah. So we want to lift up prayer to the living God. I don't know if you can stand on your feet for some three to five minutes as we call upon the great physician who is able to save to the uttermost. If you pray in tongues, just lift it up to him. Just lift it up to him. Ask for mercy. Ask for grace. Ask for healing. Ask for strength. Ask for vitality. Ask for energy. Ask that every function of every organ in our bodies shall be normal. Ask that everything that has hiked up will be brought down and everything that is lacking and low will be elevated. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Your healing, oh Jesus. We ask for your healing. We ask for your grace. Heal our broken bodies, oh Jesus. Heal our broken bodies, oh Jesus. Strengthen our weak knees, oh God. Bring, oh God, healing where sickness, disease, and infirmity has infected us, oh God. Bring about, oh God, a restoration of good health. Let strength, oh God, be projected through the airwaves, oh God, through the internet, oh God, through speakers, oh God, through headphones, oh God, through computer screens, oh God, through television screens, oh God, through the stream, oh God. We pray, oh God, that Father, oh God, your hand of healing shall break forth and affect our people in the name of Jesus, touch our pastor deliver him from the bed of affliction of God Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Lift it up to Him. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We hallow you, Lord. Give a little bit of a little bit. Pastor Baron, the singer in the Randa sendiri nata, bobo 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 bobo. Ah, ah, eh, eh, Yesus asta ili, ishi mana utukufu. Yes, sir. 
the hem of that garment. Basta barosh de verianos. There were many sick people along the streets that morning when Jesus walked down with the crowd thronging him and the 12 disciples around him. There were many sick people, but it took one, just one. Actually, there were two because before the woman with the issue of blood, there was blind Bartimaeus down the road who had shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon and he dealt with that case down the road and the master shows up in the room today having dealt with some cases in the past and having dealt with other cases but he's coming by and the bible says this woman didn't even call her name and didn't bother to mention her name because it wasn't about the the name it was about the intentions it wasn't about the name it was about the the condition and and the position of your heart to reach out to the master as he's walking by and grab a hold of him because she knew that if she could only but press through the crowds and grab a hold of him she will be healed and today someone is here you need to grab a hold of him and you know it better than I do you. You need to hold on to the master. You need, a, you need to touch him. There are times when God will touch us. But there are times when we need to touch him. We need to stretch out. We need to get out of our comfort zone and grab a hold of him. We need to say, Lord, I've had enough of this normal Christian life. I've had enough of this normal Sunday church service. And I'm trying to grab a hold of you to take me to my next. We bless you, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Have your way in our midst. Have your way in our midst. In Jesus' mighty name, the whole house shall say amen. you Lord find what I've done with my notes we will begin glory to God amen Ephesians if you will with me please chapter 6 I don't know if you believe that he's a good God because your response is like they said we should say he's a good God so we are saying it. Hallelujah. But he's a good God. In spite of it all he remains faithful. He never changes. Sister Claude you're welcome. I've been wondering where you are. <laughs> yeah, it's a good place. And your precious daughter, you're both welcome. Um, I hope that he's doing well. Cool. Wonderful. And my brother, you're welcome. But this is the first of many more visits to this place 
And if the Lord would lead you to join this assembly, why not? Why not? Hallelujah. There's a sweet presence in the room this morning. We want to do our best to maintain that. Hallelujah. And when the Lord shows up, I believe sometimes he has his own agenda. So if things take a different turn, don't be surprised. Hallelujah. If you feel that some pain in your body is gone, it's normal when Jesus shows up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Healing has been made to look like this far away thing. But the Bible calls it the bread of the children. I believe that Jesus was intentional by calling it bread because bread is one of the most common foods that we eat. Everywhere you go, sometimes it's called chapati. Hallelujah. And then other times it's called naan. Naan bread, right? And it's the most common, most simple meal to have. And Jesus likening healing to that which we call bread was basically telling us that we can have it on a daily basis if we so desire. Hallelujah. Amen. Chapter 6 of Ephesians. Please, for the guys who post to social media, okay? Media team, don't erase the worship sessions when you post. Not, I mean, like the worship session when Pastor Andrew comes. Sometimes Pastor Andrew may come and do two or three songs and stuff before he starts um, preaching, okay? But when we go online to watch the message, that has been erased. That is not there. It just starts from open your Bible to Ephesians. And I think we are missing something. The experience is less. Frankly, sometimes it's those times that people touch God. Are you understanding me? And everybody has their season of the service or their time of the service where they connect. For some, it's the praise and worship. Others, is the word. But sometimes, it's that little prophetic session right before the word or after the word. And you don't want to cut it short right after he prays and says amen. You don't want to cut it short and wait until he says open to Ephesians to start. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Are you sure? Okay. Wonderful. Ephesians 6, I read from verse 10. Finally, brethren, okay. be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord. So he's, this is the end of the letter. So he says, finally. The Passion Translation says, now my beloved ones, I have saved these most important truths for last. Hallelujah. So, it's like a dying man who is giving you his last instruction. And he's saying, finally, finally, after all is said and done, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. Be strong where? Who should be strong? But how do you be strong, if that is good English. How do you be strong? In the Lord. Hallelujah. So he's saying you should take the position of strength in the Lord. That means the actions, the decisions, the, 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 the heart condition to connect with the Lord should be yours. Are you understanding me? But the strength that is produced from that connection with the Lord is from him. Hallelujah. Have you seen a kid playing with another kid? And maybe the other kid is a little bigger than him. So when he hits him, he runs to stand behind a much bigger kid for protection. So it's like he's behind him. He's playing. He's strong in the much bigger kid. It's not his strength, but hiding behind 
that man. Pastor David, okay. So, you, you, you all know Pastor David. Okay. So, Pastor David doesn't look like someone you want to mess around with. You, you understand what I'm saying? So, imagine a kid does something and he goes to hide behind Pastor David and there's another guy, kid, coming. By the time he sees Pastor David, he, he will be intimidated. Are you understanding me? So, he will back off before, I mean, he will advise himself to back off. Before he gets one or two dirty slaps from Pastor David to protect that little boy behind him. Are you understanding me? Now, that is the picture of being. The Bible is encouraging us to be strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. So I'm preaching this morning, right? I'm bringing the message. I could easily have prepared extensively, found some good vocabulary to come and impress you all. You know, you know, you know what I'm yeah, like I've known them forever. You understand what I'm telling? I'm I'm being strong in my ability to speak maybe fluently or whatever it is. Are you understanding me? But the Bible is is asking us to be strong in the Lord. It's not even a suggestion because sometimes when Paul is writing, he will say, I beseech you, brethren. It's like, I'm pleading and appealing to you. But this one, he says it directly. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. In the Lord. Our strength is in him. In the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you understanding me? And we'll come to understand why it's very important not to trust in the arm of flesh. The Bible says the arm of flesh will fail you. The Bible says by strength. The reason why he's doing that. Amen. I'm talking about the weapons of our warfare. Hallelujah. And so he's saying be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I want to read the passion for that side of it. Okay, it says, be supernaturally infused with strength through your life union with the Lord Jesus. Stand victorious with the force of his explosive power flowing in and through you. Hallelujah. His explosive power flowing in and through you. Hallelujah. But what is interesting there is that the TPT describes it as a life union with Christ. When it says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, it's talking about your, your relationship with him, your walk with the Lord. Are you understanding me? That daily interaction, weekly um, communion with him not not communion elements but um, interaction hallelujah are you understanding me so so that it goes just beyond declaring that i'm strong in the lord to actually walking with the lord to derive the benefits of that strength in the lord are you with me are you sure and so the Bible talks in the book of Acts of some, some guys called the sons of Sceva. And the sons of Sceva had seen Paul and the other apostles casting out demons. And um, they were interested in what they were seeing. So they went to find, the um, Bible calls him a demoniac. Somebody who was uh, very, very possessed with demons and um, they took him into a room and they said today we will cast you out but they said we cast you out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth whom Paul preaches so they were using Paul relationship with Jesus to cast out a demon and that is the biggest mistake you can make because they had no direct connection to Jesus so the demoniac laughed at them 
and shook himself a little and the bible says he beat all seven of them beat them and stripped them naked and they ran out of the house why because they were oh you don't like my message Pastor Mutana has been directing you to the Lord, but you prefer a prophecy from the man. I'm glad there are no stones in this place. I may have got one or two whips of a stone by now. But I'm telling you something that would enable you to stand your ground as a believer, no matter where you are. If you can be strong in the Lord. Because when you stand behind the big bad God that you serve, there's nothing that can come for you. Are you understanding me? And so Paul is saying, finally be strong in the Lord. I should have mentioned Pastor Montana. I don't know why I mentioned him. I should have just said, Pastor, what do you think? What do you think? But one of the things that we are lacking in the present day church is christians who are able to stand on their own and survive life on their own if need be if need be they are not rooted grounded in the lord hallelujah are you understanding me and if we have to make impact as a church as the body of christ in the lord for myself also we all have to be strong in the lord in the lord in the lord not strong in your church we haven't yet gotten to that uh, point because maybe our church is small and stuff like that but if you know some of the big name churches and i don't want to mention any so apostolic ministries hey yeah we, it's like the name alone shows that you Maybe a gift is deposited. Maybe you, 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 you begin to see the ministry gifts unfold in your life. Okay. So you become, um, uh, yeah, I'm Pastor D. Glory to God. And I've arrived. You know, by the time I'm coming, 17 people will be carrying my Bible to the pulpit and stuff like that. Are you understanding me? Or maybe I'm evangelist so and so. You, you see what I'm saying? And, 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 and these days, um, the, the young men that have come, it's as if I'm an old man, but let me say it like that. You, you sometimes when you hear ministers of God talking, young ministers, you, you wonder if, if they are serving God or they are serving themselves. You wonder, you know, and, and, and when we got to the city or when we got to the village, you know, the people, they knew what we were carrying. And all those kind of funny things. It's like you are carrying it. You are carrying some power. What do you have that you didn't receive? So now, what I was saying is sad, is that now you are looking to the gift and you are standing behind the gift to be anything at all are you understanding me so you are strong in your evangelistic gift you are strong in your prophetic gift you are strong in your pastoral or teaching gift you are strong in your apostolic gift but not in the lord not in the lord there's a difference hallelujah may we repent and find our way back to the lord hallelujah verse 11 it says put on the whole armor of god so he says be strong be strong in the lord and then he says put on the whole armor of god that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil again i have the the the, the passion translation on the side let me pull that up i can read it side by side put on the complete set of armor put on the full armor put on the whole armor put on everything the instruction is for everything hallelujah and so if you are going to the battlefield you would want to be fully equipped are you understanding me you would want to be fully protected and so paul is saying put on the whole armor of god that word hold there is very important complete full it's important because 
the one that you miss out on is the place that you are going to get hit by the enemy are you understanding me so he says put on the whole armor or the complete armor provided for us so that you will be protected as you fight against the evil strategies of the accuser put on the whole armor of god that ye may be able to stand against the wiles the evil strategies of the devil devil there is the accuser one of his names is the accuser of the brethren okay so you realize that already we are looking at um at we, we, are, we are looking at putting on everything to stand before this guy called the accuser and what that is preparing us for is to understand the conditions of 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 warfare that we are engaged in if you if you know who your enemy is that's the first thing are you understanding me then if you know what kind of weapons he uses that's the second thing if you are hearing that um there's air to air missile interchange and all sort of ballistic things going on you don't show up to that battle with a bow and arrow you understand what i'm so i'm saying do you understand me are you with me are you sure you are very cool today you're very calm today i don't know if it is you or it's the holy spirit so if it is you please come alive if it's the holy spirit we will will flow like this hallelujah amen and so the 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 the, the, the this verse 11 is already it is showing us who our enemy is now the enemy when you see devil it doesn't really explain it but in some other translations it says the accuser the accuser are you understanding me the accuser the accuser the accuser i want you to keep that word in your mind he is the accuser of the brethren he is the accuser the devil's main weapon is accusation is accusation that is why you can never forget all you've done in life that was bad because he keeps rehearsing it in your mind you say oh hagen now you're calling yourself a christian <laughs> oh lord you're forgotten hagen you know and then it keeps coming back because that is his main thing that is his main thing you stand here to lead worship and you lift up your hand and you are worshiping and the devil says hey, shut up you dirty boy what were you doing uh, just two years ago with all the girls that you used to mingle with on campus shut up accuser of the brethren hallelujah are you understanding me or maybe i've had a fight with my wife before coming to church sunday morning is a good time for the devil to strike you almost always fight sunday mornings before you come to church did you know that you can't know you're not married as the married people but maybe I've done that and I'm supposed to come and preach. And as I'm preaching, I can hear the devil whispering in my ear. It's like he has come to sit on my right shoulder and he's laughing at me. Because <laughs> you're not even at peace with your wife at home. And you are coming to preach what to who? Brother, get a life. Just finish what you are saying quickly and go and sit down. Nobody's even listening to you. He is the accuser of the brethren and by the time we buy into the message of satan and kind of align with it what happens is that whatever we are doing for the lord the power of that thing is sucked out so it becomes of the letter that killeth and not of the spirit that giveth life there's no life in it to impact anybody hallelujah there's no life in it to impact your life you your life 
So the things that you are doing for God, the good things in your heart that you have intended to be for God, the devil comes and whispers some history, whispers some thoughts, whispers some acts, whispers some secret deeds, whispers something. Oh, you see the pictures that you look at on your phone when you alone are in, in your room and all those kinds of hidden things. He comes to whisper those things to you. And when you buy into it, guess what he has the victory i'm just trying to paint the picture of the kind of warfare we are in hallelujah are you understanding me and so paul goes on to say or oh, 11 put on the whole armor of god that you will be able to stand against the wiles or strategies or schemes of the devil hallelujah and 6 12 Ephesians 6 12 it says for we wrestle not against flesh and blood for we wrestle not against flesh and blood do you see that so we are still defining the battlefield what does the battlefield consist of is it tanks and the air force and the navy what 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 does the battlefield of a believer consist of he says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood now take note of the word wrestle in this verse okay um tpt i believe says hand-to-hand -hand combat we do not wrestle against flesh and blood our wrestle our fight our battle is not with each other it's not with human beings it is not with flesh and blood but he says against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places what paul is saying is that this is a very spiritual engagement that you are getting in. Are you understanding me? Now, what is interesting here is that it, it, it talks about wrestling. Somebody say wrestling. Somebody say wrestling. Now, have you seen WWF? Or, uh, I think it's E now. Eh? WWE. You see how they come in, they fight with each other. It's a one-on-one -on -one kind of battle. Are you understanding me? Now, the wrestle... It's a one-on-one -on -one conflict. But the armor is for an army. Okay? The, it, it's, it's interesting that the actual battles are one-on-one. -on -one, but the armor is for... It's, it's like you are being enlisted into an army. Okay? Spiritual warfare is not supposed to be engaged in singularly or alone as much as possible you have your own of course if you are in a battle and the army is coming against you you are coming against them let's go back to those days that this this these words were written it was swords and things like that if somebody stood in front of you you have to win that battle you understand what i'm saying but our collective so i'm winning my battle he's winning his battle you are winning your battle and collectively the army is advancing forwards but you have to win the battle that you are faced with the guy that comes in front of you with a sword you have to you you have to win against him are you understanding me and so that collective nature i just, I just want to digress a little you know that is why you don't want to be a church that is not um what's the word united in a certain way whether it's amongst individuals or whether it's amongst ministries okay um and then whether it's within ministries you want to be you want to be on the same page you want to be on the same page i can't stress that enough the media team that projects for me cannot be against me it does not work that way. Are you understanding me? The, the, the sound team that helps the guys on stage sound good cannot be against them and these guys against them. It can't work that way. Are you understanding me? Are you sure? And in the same way, you cannot be against your brother in church. 
because it 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 works negatively against us and i will show you why because your battle usually is not for you usually your battle is not for you you know that's why you see a healing evangelist on stage sniffing and blowing his nose and everything he has a cold but in his meeting others are getting healed the, 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 the healing power is not designed to heal our own bodies are you understanding me are you sure i feel like I've, you're lost I've lost you somewhere. I'm not sure what it is, but let's continue. We are almost done. I can't go through the web, um, the, the, the armor today. I'm looking at the time. But, so he says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Or um, in, 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 in the Passion Translation, it says, but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms and says for they are powerful a powerful class of demons or demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage so you are engaged as a believer in warfare against things that you can't even see with your physical eyes are you understanding me are you are you with me so now we've seen who the enemy is the devil and his main strategy is accusation now we've seen that the people also involved the other people involved that we wrestle with are not people that we can see how do you get into a cage with somebody you can't see and say you are going to wrestle with them and expect to win they see you you don't see them it's like back in the day when we used to watch chinese movies so at some point the last show you call it the last show the last show the guy they will throw some powder in his eyes and it's like he can't see anymore right and then he will remember in the training how they used to tie his eyes you know and then now he'll start feeling for the guy when the guy comes ah, ah, he's, he's moving and then he wins the battle all of a sudden okay he's using a sense beyond vision to fight the enemy are you understanding me so when you come to understand the nature of the enemy that you are against you will come to appreciate the fact that your five senses are useless somebody say useless useless completely useless in engaging in this warfare your humanity is useless in engaging in this warfare that's why he says the, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal they are not they are not physical they are not human they are not uh, uh, things that we can hold and wield physically are you with me are you sure okay so we are we, we continue to see the nature second corinthians 10 And verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, so Paul is admitting that he's a flesh man. Are you understanding me? We do not what? We do not what? War after the flesh. We do not fight after the flesh. We do not battle after the flesh. We do not engage after the what the flesh if you look at um, stick your hand in here stick your hand in here let's go to um, the book of the chapter 15 of first Corinthians then we'll come back here chapter 15 of first corinthians 15 32 if you have it please it says if after the manner of men i have fought with beasts at ephesus okay if after the manner of men i have fought with beasts
feasts at Ephesus. Now, this Paul writing again. He's saying, and, 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 and I want you to understand. Do you have another translation? Okay, don't worry about that. But it, what he's saying here, oh, you have it, okay. Amplify. He said, what good has it done me if merely from a human point of view, I fought with wild animals at Ephesus? Now, the people he's calling wild animals and beasts are not only people. They are those spiritual entities we read about in the previous verse. Are you understanding me? Are you understanding me? So he's saying that basically what he's saying in the first part of this verse is that he did not fight these beasts from the mere human standpoint. You cannot engage spiritual things from the mere human standpoint. Your intelligence is not enough to engage a spiritual being. They are at another level. Are you understanding me? They are at another level. I'm just trying to get a good window to, to explain. It's like trying to teach a dog calculus in mathematics. You, you, it doesn't have the capability to engage. You, you understand what I'm saying? It can do shake my hand, uh, jump, laugh, sit down, stand up, don't eat. Eat those little, little instructions. But by the time you get to mathematics, you are going too far for the dog. You understand what I'm saying? And maybe you can teach it out of repetition to add one, what did you say? One, one plus one, to go and point to two with his nose or something like that. But if you change it a little, it doesn't understand. Because it doesn't have the capability we don't in our natural selves the human the carnal man does not have the ability to engage spiritual things and so we are looking at what the battlefield entails we've seen satan we've seen the demons and the other things principalities powers rulers of the darkness of this world spiritual wickedness in high places we've seen those now we are also coming to understand that what we have naturally is not what you can take to that battlefield are you with me are you with me okay so back to where you stack your hands in second corinthians the bible says for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh verse 4 for the weapons of our warfare do you see that are not carnal they are not physical but they are mighty through who? ourselves uh, they, they, are, they are mighty through our church they are mighty through our man of god they are mighty through our eloquence they are mighty through our charisma they are mighty through our giftings they are mighty through who? God. That's why you have to be strong in God. Do you understand me? They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. They are mighty through God to the pulling down. The weapons that we war with, they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What's a stronghold? It's, a, it's the main... Um, defense unit if you will in a battle between two nations whatever the stronghold of the other army is where everything there is if you capture that one the war is over are you understanding me so your weaponry is able to pull down the strongholds of the enemy You missed a good place to put your hands together for the Lord. God has equipped you with the ability, if you know, if you know what that weapon is, that is. But what it's saying is that before even your weapons are introduced to you, it's saying it can pull down the 
what the best efforts that the enemy can bring to you your weapons are able to pull down his strongholds are you understanding me he says the best defense the the, the latest missiles that he has developed to throw at you your weapons are able to pull down those strongholds of the enemy are you understanding me are you with me and so I'm, I'm trying to paint the picture for you to understand what you have as a believer. You are not weak. You are not weak. You are not weak. Tell your neighbor I'm not weak. I have weapons that pull down struggles. Now let's look at what these strongholds are. Casting down imaginations, verse 5. Okay. So imaginations are a stronghold. It's all here. Okay. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Knowledge is where? It's also here. Right? So imaginations, knowledge, bringing into captivity every thought. Where, is, where are thoughts? Thoughts are here. Right? Do you realize where your battleground is? Do you realize where your battleground is? Okay, so every thought, it's right here to the obedience of Christ. Bring it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. So you have imaginations. You have um, the knowledge that is against God. Things that people do and say to make you think that God is not relevant to our modern day society the bible is an old book it was written very very long ago and the people from back in the day could not anticipate what we would be facing today so you cannot depend entirely on the book and they don't write it off completely there's all oh, some aspects of it are good but there are some things in there that need to be changed and if you are not grounded in the word and in the scriptures you will side with that kind of thinking because ultimately it sounds good it sounds reasonable but you see it is the working of the mind of men and we don't we don't use carnal means hallelujah are you with me so for the weapons uh, sorry casting down imaginations and every high thing Bible calls them high things that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every word, thought, every thought, every thought, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Your main battlefield is in here. It's in here. It's in here. Get a man to believe he can build a skyscraper to the heavens. And you'll find people who will come and join you to do it. Because you've made them believe. Do you understand what I'm saying? Get a man to believe that he's bound, he's tied. And even when you unchain him, he will sit where he was. Have you seen chicken? Jogo, that's how we call them, eh? Jogo that you've transported for a while, you've tied the legs for a while, eh? Or maybe you brought it home, you tied, you tied the legs or the feathers, whatever it is, you, wings rather, and, and you leave it there, you feed it there a little bit, it pecks away and stuff like that. Do you know after a few days, when you untie it, it's, it stays there? If you don't kick that sucker it's not going anywhere are you understanding me because in its mind it's chained although you've literally untied the knot and the legs are free it will sit there so you have to kick it go, 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 then to see oh there's freedom i can run i can run again are you understanding me now the mind is like that the mind is like that so wherever we have come from whatever our history is whatever it is that we brought with us as baggage before the lord 
we came and we claimed that we laid it at the foot of the cross but guess what after we got saved we thought it was our baggage so we carried it again and took it home with us but we were supposed to leave it at the foot of the cross so what happens is that we carry the same mindset back with us home we carry it down the road we carry it to our job place our workplaces we carry it in our everyday lives and the mindset has not been changed are you understanding me so you are saved as they come as a saint but you are no good to this kingdom business because the enemy has a stronghold over your mind and your mind is not yet set free so you cannot be effective in the Lord Are you understanding me? Are you with me? Your mind, that's the battlefield. Today we are going to pray and ask God to release our minds. We, we, we can't go into the, 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 the armor today, okay? I'm sure Pastor Andrew can do that bit at some point. Hallelujah. Amen. First Peter 5 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Sober means be watchful. And in another sense, it means don't be drunk. Be vigilant. Be active. Be alert. Because your adversary, now you're looking at him again. The devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour seeking whom he may devour that is the work of satan 24 7 he doesn't even eat he wakes up no breakfast he doesn't brush his teeth he doesn't take a bath he's looking for somebody to devour that is the work of satan are you understanding me and trust me as a believer you are very much on his agenda to devour he doesn't care about the unbelievers you are the one who says you are saved you are the one who says you are standing for god's kingdom you are the one who is who has been praying against him and binding him when you come to church guess what you are on his agenda so he says he walks about seeking whom he may devour destroy um nine please whom resist steadfast that's what the bible says resist what whom resists steadfast in the faith? Whom resists steadfast in the faith? Your, your, your disposition to Satan is to resist him. Are you understanding me? Is to resist him. Is to resist him. Hagen, please come. Let me borrow you for a second. Okay. Okay. So, um, I'm going to push you. Don't resist me. Okay. That, 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 this is how some of us are as believers we are afraid of Satan we don't want to engage him we don't want to resist him Kagan come I hope you are stronger than me <laughs> because now you, are, you have to resist me okay you have to resist me whom resists steadfast 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 means planted immovable unshakable are you understanding me? Steadfast means I ain't going nowhere. If, 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 if I perish, I perish. But this is going to be my stand. I'm standing upon the word of God for this situation. And I'm believing to set myself free and lose my mind. Are you understanding me? So resist. Whom resists steadfast? In the, hey, the guy is strong. Who resists steadfast in the faith? You know, I come, he comes. I come, he comes. I come, he comes. And very soon, the, 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 the nature of Satan is to walk away. The, Nathan, the nature of Satan. Thank you. Thank you. Please put your hands together for me. The nature of Satan is to walk away. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. He will flee from you. Whom resists steadfast in the faith? Hallelujah. As for Satan, you have to resist him. There's no other way around it. You know, 
other things the Bible tells us to flee, like flee youthful lusts. You don't show up as a young man alone with a young girl and say, I'm strong. Hallelujah. Are you understanding me? That's as far as I'll go. The junior church is in the house. That one, don't be foolish enough. That one, the Bible says you flee that one. But when it comes to this guy, how do you say Satan in Swahili? Satan. Eh? Shetan. Whatever the name is. That one, Shetan, you have to resist him. You have to develop a mindset to resist him. You have to develop a mindset of a warrior on the battlefield. When you are on the battlefield clad in your armor with your sword, when somebody comes, you don't just say, oh, please, I'm not fighting today. You, don't, you, 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 don't, you, you can't excuse yourself. You can't exempt yourself from the battle. Are you understanding me? And your guy you are fighting with is this guy who is, he wakes up and goes around looking for somebody to devour. You cannot relax as a believer. I'm sorry, maybe they didn't tell you when you signed up for it. When you signed up for Jesus, maybe they told you that uh, it's going to be like heaven and it's going to be rose gardens and, and, and even rose gardens have thorns. You understand what I'm saying? But it's going to be so beautiful and God is going to solve all your problems and Jesus is, is going to be this gentle Jesus, meek and mild, who's going to rock you in his arms all day long and you, all your problems will be... No, 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 no. Brother, wake up. Sister, are you in the house? You've got to resist him. You've got to fight him. You've got to bind him. You've got to cast him out. You've got to say, I'm standing on this word. You've got to say, Satan, shut up and get behind me. You've got to say, I will not bend. I will not bend in spite of it all. And if I perish, I perish. But by the time you get to that point, the devil will back off. He will back off he will back off hallelujah i'm going to read through the rest of it and then we'll end i can't explain hallelujah wherefore take unto you verse 13 wherefore take unto you the whole armor of god do you see the whole armor again it comes again and it says the whole armor the whole armor. Somebody say the whole armor. When you go read about the armor, it's, it's, it's a beautiful armor. Hallelujah. And it says, stand therefore, having your loins, your waist, girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness. So the first armor mentioned there is the belt of truth. When it says your waist, get with truth. That belt of truth. Truth is a quality of a believer okay but truth is also the truth of god's message concerning your life the word of god are you understanding me and that's what holds everything in the weaponry together the truth upon which you stand is what makes your weaponry effective or not breastplate of righteousness breastplate of righteousness you know this area is very what, 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 what do you call Sen not sensitive it's weak this is your weak area your organs your lungs your heart they pierce it here on the battlefield you're gone you're gone you see what I'm saying you, 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 you are gone and righteousness is what protects this area righteousness living a life of righteousness oh god i pray we get to ex 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 expound on this another time and speak some things that need to be spoken in this present day church that we live in holiness righteousness hallelujah your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace the readiness to preach those are your shoes hallelujah how I many seen a battle man you've gone to the battlefield no shoes 
you don't expose the fact that you are a believer you don't tell people about jesus nobody in your workplace knows you even go to church you are you are you are a secret you are a ninja christian nobody knows what you do it is like exposing your feet in the battlefield guess what thorns shrapnel whatever it is out there is going to get you and you're not going to be able to move effectively in the battlefield you become a sitting duck a lame duck you become a target for the enemy hallelujah and uh, above all taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked the shield of faith faith is a shield faith is a shield the true function of faith is a shield against the darts of the enemy you have to believe what god said to disbelieve what the enemy is whispering into your ears you have to believe it that's how you quench all the fiery darts of the enemy 17 says and take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit the helmet of salvation is salvation is is what protects your mind believing that you are truly saved it is your biggest battle i guarantee you because everything takes place here believing that you are being saved and also believing in the salvation that would come in christ when he returns that in this paul said in if 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 in this life alone we have hope then we are of all men most miserable most miserable your hope extends beyond this life into the afterlife jesus has saved us beyond what the physical has to offer hallelujah and 18 says praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit watch thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints it sounds like big words but it's prayer hallelujah intercession somebody say intercession intercession praying is your key the bible says that men, he, he spoke a par parable unto this effect that men ought always to pray and not to faint in luke chapter 18 i believe it is and 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 that is the nature the nature of your prayer life is what helps you you know i always say that the prayer life is the place where you you you, you learn to handle the equipment are you understanding me let's go back to the chinese movie you see them wielding in the training grounds right or they take what what do you call those sticks chuck sticks or something nunchucks nunchucks okay you see you know what i'm talking about it's a stick here a stick there and then a chain in between if you don't know how to hit it you do this and pa your head you know you do this ah, your back you know but they they train they train they train until such time that he can hit you and come back and 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 you are down but he's still up because he has mastered the art of wielding that weapon that is what prayer does the the, the camp of prayer the place of prayer the place of intercession the place where you continually seek the face of god is what makes you equips you builds you up to be able to wield these weapons effectively otherwise they are only weapons brother if you don't know how to wield shoot a gun i can give you the biggest gun in the world it, it, one slap will put you down because you can't use it you you understand what i'm saying yes and prayer brings you to that space where you can wield these weapons so one day we'll look at the weapons hallelujah but today we want to rise to our feet and call upon jehovah to free our minds so take out the thoughts take out what things it is that we have believed and are not free from take away take away take away take away from the, this battlefield of my mind take it Take it to the place where your word becomes the stronghold. Not my thoughts, not my beliefs, not my preconceived notions, not all those things that um, I, 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 I have seen 
over the years happened to to my family and and affect my family so now even though i'm a believer i still can't bring myself not to believe that the same things are going to happen to me call upon him Lord, we are calling upon you. We are calling upon you. You know that there's a pattern of thoughts that has been repeated in your life. And somehow you get, you get opportunities, but your thought process of not believing you can make it in life gets you back down the ladder again. And you are back to square one. You don't believe you can be a good Christian. You, you have tried several times but somehow you think that it didn't work for your grandfather it hasn't worked for your father and the same thing is going to happen to you you are going to fail somewhere along the line you 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 you, you, you your mind is a stronghold that is keeping you back in spite of the fact that you are Christian but if you can believe the word of God that says he has good plans for you he has good plans for you to give you a future and to give you a hope he, he is the God who will lift you up and out of the miry clay and set your feet upon the rock to stay God almighty is the one that we serve and we have come with our minds so God we lay this foundation oh God of working upon our minds a brute a brute a brute a brute and fill and fill and fill with your word in the name of Jesus Christ oh God let your spirit hover over every mind in this place and liberate us uh, deliver us oh God free our minds oh God from the lies of the enemy oh God and bring us to the place of a successful Christian life in any way possible. I've been captured by a love I can't explain. Now you have me, I'm forever changed. I've abandoned. Everything I've ever known Now I surrender, Lord My life is not my own I belong to you Oh, Lord, I belong Lord, I belong singing as a confession to him to you I belong I belong to you singing again singing again I belong I belong to you My life is not my own. To you I belong. Come on. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself. Come on. Yes. 
myself, I give myself to you. Sing it again, lift it up to him. Come on, come on. My life is not my own. My life is not my own. 